Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett, and welcome back to some EU4 Nation speed forming, where I put my skills to the test and try to form nations as fast as I can. Last time we formed Persia in 6 years, so go check out that video if you haven't already, and today we're going to be trying to form Qing. Well, I guess this counts as both Manchu and Qing speed forming, because you can't really form Qing without forming Manchu first, but uh, the main attraction is of course forming the Qing Dynasty. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe because when we hit 25k, I'll give it a shot with something like the Roman Empire or maybe the Mongol Empire. And it would be great if we could get the video to 500 likes. So, Iron Man mode as usual, let's get started. So to form Qing, we're gonna have to start off by forming Manchu, which isn't too bad. All we have to do is own that one province there and a whole bunch of extras. And we happen to have plenty of great targets around us. So we'll start off by hiring a couple of banners. Mostly cavalry because they cost less and they reinforce slower. Next up for the estates, I'll go with tribal hosts, primacy of the bannermen, and autonomy for chieftains. And I'll go ahead and rival these three around me. And I think we're good to go. So I have to take these three provinces over here and core them up, which will give me perma claims on the rest of Manchuria. And then I do have to own a large portion of Manchuria in order to grab ourselves the 10% morale of armies, some manpower recovery speed, and most importantly, the really solid general. So let's get started. Let's go after our first target. And rip. Well, that was fast. And yoink. And I'll core these two up, but not these three, because eventually I'll get more claims. And that'll make it cheaper. Anyway, next war. And there we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and yoink. So, raised all those down, and I'm coring these three provinces right now. After those are done, we'll have perma claims on the rest of Manchuria, which will make coring the rest of it much cheaper. And of course, I'm still going to need a couple of extra provinces, so, uh... And yoink. There we go. Now we get perma claims on all of Manchuria, and that should decrease the cost of all these cores, I think. Yup. Okay, beautiful. So now we have just enough admin to end up coring everything. And it's great that we got that started and all that, but uh, I'm actually going to have to keep on conquering. Because there is one province outside of Ming that we require in order to form Qing, and I think that's this one. So. It is in our best interest to go to war with Korchin right now because they're allied with Oirat. So if I can just grab a bunch of war score from his land and then take Zilin Gol, uh, that would be great. So let's start off with this, and we're going to replace our general with the new guy, because we don't want our king dying too fast now. Hopefully this guy doesn't die too fast either, but, uh, well, we'll find out. All I should have to do at this point is take the capital, I think. Unless I get really unlucky on rolls, this should be uh, just in time, actually. There we go. So even a really tough battle like this should be winnable for us. Just barely, but uh, yeah, we uh, managed to get through. Just gonna hire a couple of extra people after that one. Alright, everyone's regrouped. Let's go into Mongolia. This might cost a little more than I thought it would. But doing it now does save me manpower and time, so... Oh boy, I sure hope a 12% chance doesn't fire in the next two months. Looks like it was stupid of me to think it wouldn't. Well, we're done with this war, so I can pay attention to that now. Also, I can form Manchu, which is sick. So, there's a speedrun. Thank you very much for watching. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. Nah, I'm just kidding. And in this case, I'm actually not going to want to take the Manchu ideas because the Jurchen ideas give us 10% morale of armies and 15% national manpower modifier, which is much more important for the early game. So uh, that's a no from me. So at this point, I uh, have pretty much um, no manpower, no money, you know, no earnings, nothing. So um, fighting Ming's really not going to work out yet. I don't know if this alliance with Ashikaga is worth much, but um, we might be able to use them against Ming. So in a couple of years, there'll be enough favors for Ashikaga to join against Ming, which they say they'll help out with, but who knows. And that's coincidentally about as long as it'll take for me to get enough manpower and money to uh, get ready for this war, so... So unfortunately, the tribes can't exactly uh, give us loans, but we can sell a little bit of our extra land to them, which is all good and fine. Also, it's a pretty solid idea at this point to guarantee the leadership of the host, because that'll make it much cheaper for us to grab extra generals. 
and I'm gonna need that to slack in a couple times. Alright, everything is coming together very nicely. We reinforced and made the army larger, we grabbed the next mill tank, we have enough favors with Japan, and we just finished coring these three provinces. Very quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab myself a bit of professionalism and manpower. So, let's cancel the tributary status. We'll have to wait for the Mandate of Heaven CB, which should come- well, there it is, exactly. And here's the hoping we don't lose immediately. So I'm going to need these three provinces here, and the Mandate of Heaven, which sort of looks like this in a peace deal. There's also a very high chance that uh, Japan's not actually going to end up doing anything helpful for us, but uh, I thought it would be nice to have them along for the journey. There's like, a chance, I don't know. You know what, maybe they'll just be a good distraction for the Ming ships, who knows. But, uh, oh boy, that's a lot of Ming troops. Uh, there we go, that was a pretty lucky siege, actually. For the meantime, looks like Ming is still distracted with Oirat, which is good news for us. Uh, looks like it's boiled down to a siege race. It looks like I'm probably going to grab Beijing first, though, which is good to see. As long as I don't get attacked here, of course. They could always win on a 7%, though, who knows. There we go, Siege of Beijing, easy peasy. Now I'm gonna taunt them a little bit by going after this stack over here because it has no general and he'll probably leave this fort for it. Or he's cold and ruthless and will leave his troops to die, that also works. Well, alright then, guess we'll go after this guy as well. I actually went ahead and uh, picked up a reinforcement speed guy as well because these banners tend to reinforce pretty slowly, so hopefully that uh, fixes that problem. I'll also of course scorch this real quick and rip. Just before I forget, I'm also going to go ahead and uh, scorch Beijing as well. And if I were smart, I'd probably scorch my capital, but uh, that seems like a little bit overkill for now. Uh, I guess at this point, it's going to be all about waiting and uh, holding on to the two cities here. It's a little boring, but I can't really see an easy way to get rid of all these uh, Ming men, except for fighting them on these forts every now and then. So I guess that's what we'll do. Just gonna get rid of this stack real quick. And if I can combine maximum war score from battles on top of holding the capital for a long time, then, you know, hopefully this works out. Unfortunately, uh, Japan's been losing a lot of naval battles, which makes the whole war score from battles thing fall apart pretty easily. Yeah, if you wanted to do this yourself, I'd uh, actually recommend not calling in Ashikaga. They uh, haven't done anything so far, actually. So, yeah, bit of a mistake on my part. Thought it might be useful, and it wasn't. Ooh, and Korea apparently just hates Ming, so they decided to give me a gift. How nice. Which is weird, because, um, they rivaled me, actually. And, uh, he's not a naive enthusiast. Anyway. Ooh, Ming actually has higher, uh, tactics than I do. I didn't even notice that part. But my damage bonus from flat terrain, along with my increased shock, is just massive, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's a bit of a problem. So, um, yeah, this mission actually gives us these bonuses, but only until the death of my guy who, uh, just died, so that's pretty unfortunate. So, yep, that's, uh, 10% less morale from now on, which kinda sucks. Oh, uh, well. I always knew this war was going to be unbalanced, but, um, this wasn't the way I expected. God damn, hordes are OP. I mean, it does help when you reinforce 33% faster. This is actually an underrated buff, not gonna lie. I wouldn't be able to fight this flexibly without that. And uh, Ming's been doing so much nothing that I can actually just uh, afford to sit here for a couple of months and deal with these uh, rebel problems I have. See, they even left their own capital. Like, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. They were sieging it, and then um, they decided to leave for no reason. No wonder you explode so often. Well, they've dropped to... Um, 53,000 men only, so um, I think it's time for us to start moving inwards a little bit, after I destroy them in Beijing first. You know what, we don't need more loans, I'll just sell titles again. Fun fact, once you form Qing, you're going to uh, get a bunch of your crown land back anyway, so it doesn't really matter what we do with it right now. Right, let's grab some more manpower. Well, we can definitely get more war score from battles, but uh, other than that, it's really just going to be a lot of sitting here. I'm gonna have to start actively looking for men to fight. Alright, I just need a little bit more manpower, so... Yeah, that'll be enough for the rest of the war. Alright, we're at max taking war score, so uh, let's just end this thing. Looks like my god general uh, finally ended up dying. Took him a long time. But fortunately, we have someone else who's, uh, well, practically as good that I ended up hiring, so... Yep, it pays to fight a whole bunch. What is the AI doing, man? <laughs> what are you doing? 
Okay. All right, man. You do you. Anyways, now we are uh, really, really close to being done here. I think all I have to do actually is uh, fight one of these stacks, which should be pretty easy. Yeah, there we go. So that'll give me these three provinces, which I need. And uh, yeah, that's good enough. There we go. Emperor of China. Great. All I have to do is core this and then uh, state it. So yeah. So maybe I was playing around with the uh, Ming AI for too long. So my apologies. This probably could have been a little bit faster. But uh, all we have to do from here on out is uh, wait for this one core. So I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. And so there we have it. Just before 1463, forming Qing as Manchu. Could it have been done faster? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I was kind of playing around too much with the Ming AI, uh, just going for, you know, big numbers of casualties and getting more uh, war score from battles. And calling in Ashikaga was just a terrible idea in general. So if you want to do this yourself, which I don't know, I wouldn't exactly recommend because I don't like the uh, mandate mechanics, then don't call in Ashikaga because uh, they actually lost me a lot of war score from battles because of a bunch of naval battles. And your best bet once you secure this area and Ming's down to like 80,000 men is to really just walk over and siege down Nanjing. Because honestly, it'll just take them a while to siege down Beijing, and hopefully your spy network is uh, big enough at that point where you can just out-siege them. But anyway, let me know what nation you want to see me speed form next. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you disliked it. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to all of the kind people over on Patreon. Starting with those we have in the general tier, Quiet Guy, Brennan Arsenault, Ben Greenhagen, Torvald, Dire Avenger, and Farron. Those in the Prince tier, Snow Raven, Rockbox2020, Robert Kaleno, and Balancer Steve. In the King tier, we have Chewy Shoot and Natsuki. In the Elector tier, we have TFLJ Martis. And in the Conqueror of Worlds tier, we have The Watcher. Thank you guys so much for your pledges this month, I really appreciate it, and I just can't thank you enough.